Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It's Friday, and it is time for our daily devotion. So I want to invite you to come and join me as we gather together for a few moments, as we pause in the middle of our day and spend some time just celebrating and focusing on who God is in our lives. As you join the Facebook uh, event here, our live uh, recording of this, would you please just say hello? Leave a quick comment. Let me know that you're here. I would appreciate you doing that. I'll say good morning to you. We'll announce the scripture. We'll remind you we read out of the upper room as well. That's our devotion source. It's a beautiful Friday. I just got done doing some lawn mowing and weed eating and Blowing all the crud around, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Got done just in the nick of time. Good morning, Mr. Mueller. Good to see you and Barbara. Glad you're here. Feel like I got feel like I got stuff all over my glasses because I have stuff all over my glasses. <laughs> Hi Marilyn, good morning to you. Marilyn is watching on time for once. <laughs> you make it periodically, and that's a good thing. I'm glad you're here. We're going to be reading out of the letter to James in the New Testament, the letter to James. And uh, you'll find that right after the book of Hebrews. So the letter to James chapter 1 is where we're going to be at. The verse 19 to the end of the chapter. James chapter 1. Oh, hey, good morning, Linda. Good to see you today. I think my sunny view in my windows kind of disturbs a little bit of the uh, the video quality here. Kind of makes it look a little hazy in my uh, dining room. <laughs> James, chapter one, verses nineteen to seven, uh, twenty-seven. Here's our opening prayer, friends. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. James chapter 1, beginning in the 19th verse, says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be righteous but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. For pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Our devotion writer today is Elizabeth Erlandson, and Elizabeth is from Nebraska. Her focus verse is verse 19. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And here is Elizabeth's devotion for today. My husband was in the hospital recovering from emergency open heart surgery. I had spent several days sitting by his side, first keeping vigil, then keeping him company. One afternoon, desperately in need of respite, 
I drove to a nearby mall and just wandered through the shops. When I went into my favorite clothing store, the clerk who helped me was new. We were strangers, but within minutes, I was sharing my story. She listened intently and with great empathy. When I left the store, I felt better. Since then, I have often shopped, uh, stopped by the store just to say hello and visit for a few minutes. We live in a hurried world where listening with compassion and understanding is rare. I think I probably need to read that sentence again. We live in a hurried world where listening and compassion are compassion, listening with compassion and understanding is rare. We live in a hurried world where listening with compassion and understanding is rare. James 1.19 reminds us to be quick to listen and slow to anger. Listening well is a difficult discipline to cultivate, but it is worth the effort. In a noisy and distracted world, finding someone who cares enough to pause and acknowledge our feelings is priceless. Perhaps by becoming good listeners, we will encourage others to come back and hear what God says to them through us. So the thought for the day is, today I will listen to others with patience and empathy. I think um, most all of us would say that listening with empathy is a lost art. <laughs> I would actually maybe challenge that to say that it's an art that very few of us have ever developed across any generation. That listening is just something we humans are not all that good at doing. And it just perpetuates it, perpetuates itself from generation to generation to generation. Now, you might know someone. You might know one person who's really, really good at listening. But do you know five people? Do you know ten people? Do you know 20, 30, 40 people? that are all really good at listening? And I'm going to guess the answer for most of us is we're lucky if we can name one person who's really good at listening because we live in a highly distracted world. They are correct. You know, they're, they're, she's correct in that. Uh, all of us have a little tool in our back pockets or in our purses. We carry it around all the time with us. It is a constant distraction to us. We're either checking our messages, we're checking our emails, we're looking at social media, we're looking something up on the internet because you can do that quickly and efficiently on your phone. We're constantly distracted by it. And it interrupts, I think, good conversation. It interrupts our ability to listen. It's hard for us simply to just take that thing and put it aside and have even a three-minute conversation with someone, let alone a 20-minute conversation. And yet we need to get back to that. If there's anything that people are starving for, I think, in our society, in the world where we are, quote, unquote, more connected than we ever are before, actually we are more isolated than we ever are before. And we need to get back to the art of listening to one another. Not through Snapchat, not through Facebook, not through TikTok, not through Twitter or any of those kinds of things, but in-person conversation. So think about somebody that you know that you would just love to sit down with sometime soon and have just a short conversation with. You don't have to sit down with them for hours on end. Maybe it's a 15-minute a 20 minute conversation, maybe it's five minutes, but someone that you'd like to just sit down over a cup of coffee with and remind them how much you value them and that you just wanna hear what's going on in their story and take time to listen. Because if we'll learn to listen to one another, I think we will also, and this is the second part of this, we will also become better at what it means for us to listen to God. I think in many ways we're way too distracted for us to be able to also listen to God. So for us to reclaim maybe that part of it as well, we need to take time to listen to God. And, you know, you can, 
you can think about reversing the order of that as well. Maybe as you become better at your time of meditation and as you can become better at your time of spending in silence and listening for God, that you might become more attuned to the ways in which you need to do that. And that might teach you what it means and to be better at listening to someone else, or it might be the reverse, whatever the practice is. I want you to take an opportunity. I want to encourage you to take some moments to listen to others, to do so with patience and empathy. Find someone that you care about to do that with. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Gracious God, open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Teach us by your spirit to truly listen to others. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, friends, for being here today. What a privilege it is always to be with you, and I appreciate you coming and joining me. By the way, hello, Jack and Pat. Glad that you made it this morning, and good morning, Mr. Dunbar. Good to see you as well. I want to invite you all to come and join me again tomorrow for our devotion time at this moment. Uh, I would love to see you all there. For those of you that maybe watch this a little bit later on today, don't forget, leave a quick comment, say hello. I would appreciate you doing that. If you'd like to, feel free to uh, repost this on your own Facebook page so that your family and your friends can have a moment uh, to share in our devotion time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday. May it be a blessed time. God's rich grace and peace be upon you. See you tomorrow.